Hello and welcome to another edition of Andy's Shed Live. It is Sunday the 26th of July 2020 and this is Series 7, episode number 26, where we're going to be talking about how to wire a trim phone. But before we do all that, of course, we've got some... Uh, We've got some things to do today and um, well as always I've got a couple of things to tell you about before we start. First and foremost if you want to get in touch with us and you don't want to leave a comment somewhere below or wherever the comments are these days um, you can uh, get in touch with us here. Uh, go to our website at andyshed.colpress.net and uh, click on the contact us thing it'll, it'll show you a little contact form and if you fill that contact form in It'll basically send me an email. If you want to send us any pictures or anything, that's the way to get in touch with us. And then I can send you a message back, which will have an email address on it that you can send pictures to then. Now you can't send pictures on the contact form, but I'll email you back and then you will be able to send pictures um, from that um, if, you, uh, if you want to. And also remember, if you want to support us and join us on Patreon, you can find us here, patreon.com forward slash Andy Shed is the place to go um, for all that. Um, so, on with the show. We want to try and get it in under an hour today because if we do, if I do it over an hour when I put this video on library, uh, lbry.com or uh, lbry.tv if you want to go and uh, watch us there. Um, when I put this video on library, if it's over an hour, I have to upload it manually. If it's under an hour, it does it automatically. Um, so I'm going to try and keep it under an hour today, so it does it automatically. Um, Christopher2000 out there in Australia says hi. Hi Chris, how are you today? One of our regular viewers out there. And um, yeah, well, what have we been up to this week? You will notice the 3D printer is silent this week. That's because it's already done its quota of work for this week. Um, we've had a new project on this week. You may have seen the other week I was doing little uh, little 009 model railway things. Well, we've been 3D printing a box for a controller this week. It's not been totally successful so far. This is a prototype of a flat pack version of it. This um, is basically a flat a flat kit and you have to make it up out of six pieces to make this box. And then it's got a little pulse width modulation uh, controller inside it um, that you can 3D printed box version of it. So I'm going to try to, um, to alleviate the flat packness and alleviate the having to glue it all together um, as well. So that is that right i've told you about that i can put that out of the way now right so that is that is all about that also um today i've got to say if you've bought a little uh, i bought a little camera out of argos any time ago if you bought one of these a little a little vive action camera out of argos just check the battery inside it I bought this about six months ago out of Argos and the battery inside it, I don't know if you can see that, but it's swollen up, you know, and it could have damaged the camera if I had not caught that in time. Can you see how that battery's swollen? So if you've got one of those Vive Action cameras out of Argos in the UK um, a few months ago, Check the battery because the battery is swollen. You might not get the battery out, or it might have leaked. Or these batteries, these Leon batteries, can also burst into flame. So I'm told. So be a bit careful of that. Um, so those batteries are obviously a bit dodgy. Um, Jimmy Myers is uh, joining us in the chat. He says hello, Han Andy. We had a blue trim phone in the 70s. My mum hated it. She always said she couldn't hear it ringing. She couldn't hear it ringing. Oh, you can turn them up, you know, Jimmy. <laughs> there's a there's a there's a little thing on on the side of a trim foam so you can actually turn it up if I can um, get the other uh, camera on oh a bit out of focus uh, um, yeah the little thing here and that it goes to loud there don't you can see on that but it says loud on it there can you see that and you, and you can turn it down to a position that says soft. 
and if you're very clever you can turn it off as well and you can't normally turn the trim phone off that position is normally blanked out um, but there is a way of getting that off position on the trim phone um, which I will show you in a little moment or two but yeah make sure it's set on loud is the thing um, and then it should hopefully be loud enough for you to hear or for your mum to hear back in back in the 70s right so we um, somebody was asking about trim phones the other week um, and saying they're a bit they're a bit strange on the inside said they're a bit um, they're a bit uh, a bit weird on the inside when you when you when you come to put them together so we're going to uh, we're going to have a look at this one on the inside tonight we're going to start by showing you what it says underneath it though this because this is the sound 22 two sound 22 mark 2 and it says BMF modified underneath it as well. I've got no idea what that means. But there is also a black sticker under here to say it's been back um, to the factory. And it says 2722F, F for figure, um, POFDI, batch sampled, FWR73. So that means this was refurbished in 1973, this trim phone. So it was probably actually quite an early one originally. Uh, Jimmy says we had the trim fold on loud my dad got the GPO to change it um, and and she still couldn't hear it couldn't she <laughs> yeah my mum has a, has a similar problem she can't hear people speaking on the phone <laughs> even though I can hear people speaking on the phone across the other side of the room which says I can't hear people talking on it right so here is a trim fold from the 1970s and it's got the dial center in it and as always i need a bit of sticky tape to get that off and i haven't got a bit here i don't think so i shall have to go and get a bit of sticky tape um christopher 2000 says my mum remembers the trim phone in the 70s was your mum in england in the 70s then christopher or or did you have trim phones in australia i don't think you had them in australia did you we 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 was she in England in the seventies? Right, right. We're going to have a little look inside of inside of this um, in just a moment. I've just got to go and get a little bit of uh, a little bit of sticky tape. So I'll leave you looking at it a second. I will be right back. have got the sticky tape it's as simple as this for getting the dial center off a bit of sticky tape like that don't let it get stuck to everything break it off then with your bit of sticky tape put it across the center of the dial stick it on to the the label cover as they call it the thing in the center of the dial don't stick it on to the finger wheel stick it on to the middle bit Right, just a little bit if you can. Give it a sharp tug like that. And you'll find that then comes off nice and cleanly without any damage. I don't know how many times I've done that on these videos. And every time I've done it, somebody goes, oh, I didn't know you could do it like that. Um, Dominic Meekin is here as well. Hi, Dominic. Um, right, was it you, Dominic, asking about these trim phones last week? So, somebody was asking about these trim phones and I can't remember who it was uh, <laughs> right so here we are we've got we've got the uh, we've got the dial center off now now the way to get into a trim phone at least the 722 trim phones is there's a plastic screw here undo this plastic screw Dominic says, did my message on your website form get through? Tell me what the message was, Dominic, and I'll tell you if it got through or not, because they actually come through to me. Although you fill the form in, they actually come through to me as emails. 
so they just look like ordinary emails when when they come through to me and i know one or two people have sent me emails this week somebody's also sent me three phone cases as well this week for 746 phones uh, uh, an ivory one a red one and a grey one and i've got no clue who sent them because they were just in a box without any markings on it and there was nothing in it and at first i thought have i bought these off ebay and forgot but I've gone through all the list of things I've bought off eBay and they're not on the list of things I've bought off eBay. So somebody has sent me three phone cases this week. Well, thank you to whoever it is. I've got no clue who it is, though, because there was nothing in the box to identify who did it. Right. We've got this, uh, we've got this uh, screw out now. Chris says, uh, yes, his mum grew up in the UK in the 70s. Excellent. So she'll know all about 70s telephones then. Um, right, so the way you get the top off these trim phones, it's very similar to how you get it off a uh, off a seven four six or a seven o six. Lift it at the back, and then you can't lift the front. You've got to move it this. You've got to move it this way. You've got to move it towards the front because there's a lip that engages. You just move it towards the front a bit like that. Then you can lift it because there's little tabs under there you see that engage and then that is where also your little screw then drops out so just drop that screw back in there just for safekeeping for a minute and here is the insides of a trim phone um, so I'm going to turn it around so you guys can see it a bit better um, so here it all is here it is um, this thing here yeah, people will say what is that that is basically a regulator and that is similar to the thing on the little uh, on the little card in a 706 you know the thing on the little on the little circuit board that slots in on 746 and you can take it out of circuit by turning it in and put it the other way around on 706 rather not on 746 um, the little regulator thing um, to quiet the phone down a bit on short lines well that's a, that's a regulator as well um, but that's just how it is that's just how it's packaged in a trim phone so what have we got here um, bum, 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 bum. it looks right we've got all sorts here yeah, right what have we got the question is has this trim phone been converted you may have noticed it's not got a line cord on it the line cord has been cut and this is what's left of the line cord on this trim phone and it's all wrapped around there but this is what is left of the line cord so you'll see it's in strange places You've got green up here, you've got blue up here, you've got red here, and you've got white here. Oh, red and white are in the right places. Um, green and blue are in um, funny place. The green's in a funny place um, there. Um, of course, if you were converting this to modern plug and socket, what you would do, you would take that green off there. And basically you don't need that green attached to anything um, the green of your line cord but what you would normally do is put it on T uh, 15 I think it is so you've got T1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 so basically this has been semi converted for plug and socket by the looks of it um, so I'm just going to park the green on T15 because that's just got nothing connected to it you see T15 so you just park your green on there it's a bit fiddly to do upside down I'm having that blue Peter problem they always say oh it's a bit fiddly upside down towards the camera that on 15 
and what you would do you will put a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor between T4 and T5 there okay that's what you would do uh, that's what you would do between there because this this brown wire here is going to the ringer circuit and um, the other side of the ringer should be somewhere on this lot down here right I'll take the, the dial out for a minute and it's as simple as that and the other side of the ringer is that grey one look well when it comes to connecting the main circuit board to the ringer or to the bells in a in a 746 or a 706 the wires that they use to connect to the bells can be any colour it's just whatever bit of a wire they had at the time um, so just be aware of that so here we've got a brown one and then from the other side we've got a grey one that goes to your block of T16, 17, 18 and 19 so that is to your ringer and your ringer is on this little board down here and this is where you have the thing where you can turn the phone off because the little wheel here is here that you turn and the thing is that can be turned off now but by screwing this little screw in here if I can do it screw that down and now you can't turn it beyond soft All right, that's loud going down up, loud sort of medium softest and you can't turn it down anymore you cannot now turn it off with that with that little screw turned down but if you undo that screw a few turns leave it in there and then you can turn it off you see get it to the off position now um, and the reason for that is um, in the sort of 60s and 70s and into the early part of the 1980s um, the GPO and British Telecom as it became um, basically said you must always have at least one bell connected to the end of your telephone line so if you'd only got one phone and most people had only got one phone and for most people they were hardwired in at the time um, that must always be able to ring you must not be able to turn your phone off it was a rule they had um, and so the trim phones and other phones were all sent out with hardwired ringers that you could not turn off as a general rule so that's how you alter a trim phone so you can turn it off you just unscrew that screw a few turns you can leave it in there you don't have to take it right out and then you'll find you can turn it off um, right I'll just catch up with the with the comments and that that are flying up the screen at the moment um, right, what have we got um, Oh, Arthur G says, the three 746 cases was me, Andy. Oh, thank you, Arthur. Thank you. Uh, they, they turned up. I was scratching my head. I was trying to think. Who sent these? <laughs> it, it, was, it was Arthur G. So the mystery has been solved. I had a feeling it would be somebody in here. Um, um, Dominic Meekin says, his message was something tied along the line of early trim phones, he thinks. I did get a message about trim phones, Dominic, but I can't look at it while I'm on here um, because uh, it makes my computer do strange things. Um, uh, Dominic says, I've never understood why the GPO went for a nylon screw. No, me neither. I think it was probably something to do with cheapness. Uh, um, Arthur G says, wrote underneath the boxes, 
as a cryptic clue. They need a bit of restoration, so you're just the chap for them. Yes, Arthur. This is this is the three the three phone cases. Um, yeah, they do need a bit of restoration. Um, we're going to do it on on a show in the near future because the red one in particular has got um, like a melted bit on the side where it's had some heat damage, hasn't it? So the side of the case is melted and we're going to do it on here in a few weeks time. We're going to try and sort that out um, with that red one. Um, So uh, yeah, we're, we're going to try and sort that red case out. Got that? That will be quite a challenge. That one. So we're going to have a go at that. Um, um, Dominic says uh, it's interesting to see that the layouts of the components of the board I have is quite different. Yet it is also different from the older 712 layout. Um, it also doesn't have the regulator. So this one that you've got then, Dominic, this trim phone that you've got, isn't like this, which is a 722. And it also isn't a 712. Okay? So it's something in between. That's what is that what we're saying? Uh, Falakorok says hello. Hello there. Hiya. Yeah. How are you doing? Um... Arthur G says, my trim phone volume and ringer has been taken out. Another eBay crook. So the so the volume and the ringer. So that this whole board is missing, is it? This this bottom board. Is that what you? Um, is that what you're saying there, Arthur? That whole bottom board is missing on yours. Because that's that's got all sorts on it. That that bottom board, you can see there's lots of capacitors and and um, and uh, resistors and things on that board to make it all happen. Um, so yeah, so it is sounding interesting because it is it is sounding like. Um, like the one that Dominic's got, the trim phone that Dominic's got, is not like these. Sorry, I've not got a camera on it. It's, n it's not like this inside. Now, this says underneath, as I said earlier, they've been backed in the factory in 1973. And it had been modified in 1973. There you go, a little bit of plastic just dropped out of that. Now, what that off, we'll find out in a minute. Um, so this, is, this has been back to the factory in 1973 to be refurbished but it was only made in 1971 look because here we've got AA TCH 712 and up here we've got TCH 711 so 1971 for both circuit boards so it was only two years old when somebody decided oh we don't want a trim phone and it got it probably got taken out of somebody's house and sent back to the refurbishing plant that the GP operated then and then came out again in 1973 so so that's interesting um, but this basically has been converted already for um, plug and socket it just needs a resistor in there between 4 and 5 and uh, and then a new line cord fitting of course and it's the remnants of the line cord of the old line cord are right, here um, so just to clarify for a trim phone where the line cord goes um, blue goes to T6 red goes to T8 um, green goes to T15 and white goes to T18 okay um, and strapped together are T5 and T6 and T8 and T9 and also strapped together are 16, 17, 18 and 19 it is exactly like the strapping in a 746 or a 706 
um, they wanted things to be standard um, the GPO so that is how uh, it should look I know that says that's for a 706 a 746 and 8746 um, but that is how it uh, it should look um, for uh, for a trim phone as well so I'll just leave that up a moment so you can uh, you can digest that or pause it if you if you want to to have a look at it um, all right, I'll just go through the comments again uh, Dominic says you believe so the extra lettering stamped underneath makes me think it was some sort of field trial phone um, that would be that would be an interesting one then Dominic but the boards are different you say um, can you take a picture of the boards that are in it and send it to me or have you done that already and, and I've just not seen the photos yet um, Arthur G it does not ring but does ring out the volume control is completely missing right so then Arthur in, in yours have you got this board but without the volume control somehow somehow that volume control bit's been taken now but you've still got this bottom board in or is this entire board missing that's a uh, that's the question um, Dominic says 722L TCH 68 66 LAU 62AAC uh, is the exact lettering on his crikey that's a lot of stuff to be on there well I, w I would say I would say 68 so it's a 722 made in 1968 according to that then Dominic so the other bits of that um, I'm not sure what they mean but the bit that I recognize from that is 722 L so it should have a lettered dial um, would that be right Dominic as you as, as your uh, has your uh, your trim phone got a lettered dial um, so it says, yeah, so it's a 72L, so it should have a lettered dial with the numbers and the letters on the dial. Um, um, it's TCA, so that's the manufacturer, I believe, uh, and it was made in 1968. Um, not sure what the 66 LAU, 60, um, 62 AAC is um, if that's all on the base together I'm not sure what that means um, Moog Dom is here hello Moog hiya um, it says sorry to hear about the Arthur I never quite know what condition the phone is in until it post turns up yeah yeah it sounds like you've been sold a bit of a pup there on eBay Arthur um, um, says Arthur says he's got over 60 700 series but still not a decent trim phone eBay has some good sellers but a lot of uh, shifties that is very very true you do have to be a bit careful what you get off uh, off eBay um, um, Dominic says he thinks the trim phones look slightly better with a lettered dial I think they all do um, what we're talking about with lettered dials on a trim phone just in case you're not aware of it um, is the letters are actually on the back of the dial um, so they're actually on the plate through there where this one's just got numbers it would have numbers and letters early trim phones did 712s generally did um, but that's a 722 and they I don't think gen, I don't think generally did so maybe the very early ones did so it's an, it's definitely an interesting one you've got there um, Arthur says it'll have a look it does dial out it just does not ring the volume control is completely gone the eBay seller got cheeky as well yeah well, that, that, that sounds like par for the course with eBay that was I'm afraid there Arthur um, what you were saying there 
about about it dialing out it probably will dial out because this bottom board in a trim phone I don't know how clear this shows up on the video but there are actually two circuit boards in here this one which is high and this one which is lower and I found out where that bit of plastics come from it is off there because there's a little grip thing that holds this top board in um, but this bottom board is just the ringer literally is just the ringer if you undo this screw in the middle you should be able to get this board out and when you take that board out you can see there's only two wires to it and those are the ringer wires okay now you could theoretically I believe I believe um, and somebody might want to try this because I've certainly not tried it but I believe you could couple those up to a bell a ring you know the two coils and that out of a uh, 746 or something um, drop that in there and it would ring like a 746 with a proper ringer that may be the way to get a trim phone that has a loud ring but I believe you could do that so it wouldn't ring like a trim phone it would ring like an ordinary phone because all this on this circuit board is literally just the ringer so if this circuit board is missing it probably will dial out and it just won't ring you can probably take an incoming call on it um, I would say you'd be able to take an incoming call but you just won't know when it's ringing so you just need a separate ringer but that is literally just the ringer that board which I am now going to try and manoeuvre back in here um, and you've got to get it under that other board and you've got to get that wire there up this little slot here so something like that I think yeah that's it it's back in right and I shall put the little screw back into it um, uh, RTD says some of these sellers know exactly what they're selling in rubbish but pretend they just found it usually the favorite is they found it in a house clearance or some other nonsense yep that is that is very very true um, uh, Dominic says his phone can't have been assembled before April 68 as the ringer and speaker is stamped 30th of April 1968 yeah that's assuming though that the ringer and speaker is original to the phone because the the big problem is you never know what bits are original because you've got no way of knowing what bits have been taken out and messed about with and put in something else and that and and there are a lot of people doing it now taking bits out of phones and putting bits in somewhere else and all this kind of thing not to mention the reproduction parts that aren't actually reproduction at all because they don't actually match anything that was ever made originally um, um, Arthur G says yeah it's tricky trying to decipher who is being honest um, um, yeah it, it, is, it is tricky to decipher it it's very tricky to decipher it um, with eBay I basically only go generally by the pictures um, I don't generally go by the descriptions I will look at something and if the picture doesn't pique my interest um, then I don't bother reading the description if the picture does pique my interest I will then read the description generally um, but I'm not looking on eBay for phones that are working I am normally looking for bits and that because Phones that are working and allegedly in good condition um, are very few and far between because they've normally got modern reproduction parts that aren't correct on them or they're ridiculously expensive these days. Um, 
and I've seen 706s listed for well over £200 um, on eBay. Um, you know, it's it's absolutely crazy. Um, I would rather buy a phone in unknown condition. If the seller says, we don't know the condition, they're the, they're the sort of ones that I go for. Um, and, and you pay your money and take your chance. Um, and I normally buy the ones that have got not got line cords or have not been converted for plug and socket because they tend to be cheaper because not everybody knows how to convert them and it's an easy process to convert them. Um, um, so yeah, so so I tend to go for the ones that are in bits and stuff and we uh, and we put them back together. But yeah, I mean you can normally get them back together. This is the beauty of them; they are so interchangeable the bits. You're better off buying five or six to an unknown quantity than buying one expensive one that is allegedly working. Um, because if you buy five or six to an unknown quantity, chances are you'll be able to make three or four good ones out of the five or six. Um, I mean, this trim phone that I've got here, this was part of a batch. I think I think I bought about four or five from a guy. Uh, we've got quite a few of these grey trim films. These are theoretically grey. I know they look ivory. They look ivory to me as well. It's not just the camera, but they are theoretically grey. It's just how the uh, ABS has yellowed over the years. Um, so. Yeah, Arthur G says um, uh, he likes to fix phones. The expensive ones are all new plastic and thus of no interest to him. Um, yeah. Uh, and and me as well if they've got all new cases um, you know that destroys the originality to me it's all about originality and I would rather um, spend quite a lot of time and effort restoring a broken case for a 706 let's say rather than buying a new one you can you can buy a new case for 706 for under a tenner but I would rather restore the original one um, because it's all about the originality for it. Um, I have occasionally swapped cases, but I don't even like swapping an original one for an original one. I like to keep the original one to the phone on there. Um, so, um, the trim, this trim phone, um, basically we've had a look inside it and we've established um, that Dalek has different and Arthur's has got a bit missing um, so yeah we'll try and figure out what they are then um, I will have a look in some more trim phones this week I'll, I'll try and remember to open some more up and see if they're any different on the inside um, because it sounds like there's something interesting going on with the inside of trim phones that we don't exactly know about um, just in case you're not sure what's going on with the trim phone here, um, there's all kinds of bits and pieces um, inside here. This is um, these these are your, these are your coils, your induction coils. Um, this is your switch, your hook switch. Um, uh, as I say, this is basically. Um, this uh, is a regulator if your trim phone's not got this don't panic you don't need it you can take that out and it will still work um, and then this bottom board to say this is all to do with your ringer um, and that little screw there just undo that a few turns and then you'll find you can magically find an off position that you never knew was there um, so you can actually turn the ringer off if you want to. So that is about the size of it. Um, it's a shame that that line cord's been cut off. We'll have to uh, we'll have to get another one. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to take that bit off out of the phone because it's of no use to anybody. So now I've shown you where everything goes, I'll uh, I'll take that bit out. So how are we doing in the comments? 
I'm scrolling by quite quick tonight. I've got quite a few people here tonight. Um, now, Arthur G says he keeps them until he can match the correct year parts to them. If it is missing a, a, that part. Yeah. Do you also match the correct manufacturer parts, Arthur, as well? Um, because some things were made by lots of manufacturers. And if you know all the manufacturer codes in the plastic mouldings, you're doing really, really well. You're a better man than me. Because I I draw the line at that. I don't know the manufacturer codes in all the mouldings. Um, uh, Christopher says, I got my 312 to ring with the 3.3k resistor. Um, because Bell was adjusted wrong. Excellent, Chris. We were talking about this last week, weren't we? You got this 312, this uh, this Bakelite phone, and it wouldn't ring uh, when you put the resistor in. You've now put the resistor in, and, and it rings with the resistor. Did it ring before without the resistor, but not with the resistor? Is that is that what I'm thinking? Um, because, 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 when you put the resistor in, you are making less power go to the bells, so they are a bit weaker, okay? So, it may be that you need to tweak the bells round a little bit to make them ring, because the clapper might not move quite as far between the two bells when you've put a resistor in. Um, so I'm glad I'm glad you've sorted it out. Um, if you took that resistor out and put a strap in, you'd probably notice it was quite a bit louder. Um, but you're best to have that resistor in to keep the REN number of the phone down. So if you plug it in where you've got other phones, they will all ring. Because if you take that resistor out and just put a strap in, it will be greedy. It'll use up all the power on other phones and probably won't ring. Um, Arthur G says, yeah, he does try to match the uh, the manufacturers um, um, for the plastic parts. That's impressive, Arthur, let's say. <laughs> um, I've never quite gone that far, mainly because I'd probably never find all the all the bits to match. I've, I'm I'm doing so many phones all the time um, that. You know, I would need parts from here to Kingdom Come if I was trying to match all the uh, all all the makers as well. I, I match the original parts, but not necessarily the original maker of the part, um, because you know you get something like a green dial surround or something. Uh, for uh, and you might have one in stock and you need one for a phone and you've only got the one so you have to put that one on no matter who made it provided it's the right part I'll, I'll put it on um, Christopher says uh, I got an Australia telephone it was stamped wrong it said 1968 on it um, oh a message has disappeared <laughs> alright forget that <laughs> um Right, so I've taken the remains of that of that uh, line cord off. We'll have to get a line cord for this. Um, but now we'll put it back together, shall we? Right. Now, somebody was saying to me the other week, one of you guys was saying to me the other week, that the dial on that all flops about. Well, it does. Um, look at this. Um, look at uh, that. That's it. It's not held into that plastic thing that black plastic thing at all it just sits there and flops around but it can't go far and the reason it can't go far is because the other connectors come through that hole there you see and that's all that stops it spinning around at this stage but what you do is you put these two feet and these two feet can you see that that these feet have got like toes on the back ones here haven't um, so those ones with the toes on go down and go under that upper circuit board and then the other end just slots in to the phone like that so that holds it like that now it's a bit wobbly 
but when you put the top back on the phone because there's the cutout there for the finger stop that will magically hold it and stop stop it doing a bit of this uh, <laughs> so remember we've got to get those those under the bottom edge as we put it on so we put that end down first like that get those things under the bottom edge and then as usual the dial gets in the way but you can with a trim phone usually sort of move it and get it in place and what's happened here you see I've got things stuck out the side of it there so we'll take this off again and this is a classic problem with trim foams because everything is packed in so much that has to go just on the inside like that and it just sits there like that um, it really is fitting a, a quart in a pint pot sort of thing this so bottom is down not right down otherwise it won't fit on it just has to be just off the ground that and then you can find where, where it sort of fits and then just jiggle the dial and then that sits down again and you can feel your switch up starts to work and then that's that plastic screw will be sticking up so we can now put the plastic screw down Right, right now. now. Um, Arthur G says, The GPO never bothered matching manufacturer parts. They just put a working usable part on it. So sometimes I wonder why I should bother. Maybe I'm OCD or something. <laughs> yeah, well that's it. You see, when they went back to the factory in Wales or wherever um, and were refurbished, they just used the bits they had that were the right bits. They didn't bother who'd originally made the bits because theoretically everybody was making the bits to the same specification. That was the theory. Didn't always work in practice, but that was the theory. Um, Dominic says, in order to recreate how a new tritium tube might look, I've put a C-shaped piece of card over the original tube painted with glow-in-the-dark paint. That's an interesting thought. Now, somebody's going to ask me about tritium tubes here, aren't they? And somebody's going to say, has this got a tritium tube in it? I don't think it has, but we'll see. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to screw it down. I'm going to do the tritium tube from the front. So I'll, I will continue. So that, that's all screwed down. Now. That's all back on. To look for a tritium tube in a trim phone... Um, and what a tritium tube is, for those that don't know, um, a tritium tube is basically a tube of radioactive tritium um, that was in a glass sort of almost circular tube. It was more than a U shape, but not quite a circle um, that was put behind the dial of a trim phone because in, in classic style of the Simpsons, um, where they go to the nuclear plant and they come out glowing green tritium tritium is nuclear active and it does actually glow in the dark <laughs> um, so they used to put this in trim phones and there was a big scare about this tritium this this nuclear stuff in your trim phones and that and somebody a couple of years ago did actually contact me a woman contacted me because her child was in a school play and they were using an old telephone in the school play and she'd heard that old telephones were radioactive it wasn't even a trim phone it was a Bakelite 300 series that they were using in this school play and she'd heard that old phones were radioactive and she was really really worried about it <laughs> First thing to tell you about tritium is even if you've got a tritium tube, it's totally not dangerous because the radiation coming off of a tritium tube when they were new is fairly insignificant and the half-life tr of tritium is really short. Now, a half-life is when the radioactivity halves. 
So some things, the radioactivity of, of an item might halve within a year, let's say. So that would have a, a half-life of a year. Some things it might take a hundred years. So that's got a half-life of a hundred years for the ra radioactivity to halve. Some things might take 10 minutes. Tritium's half-life is relatively short. That's why trim phones these days don't glow because the tritium isn't radioactive anymore. But let's just see if there is a tube in this one. There are stories um, that in the late 70s or early 80s, a lot of trim phones had their tritium tubes removed um, because there was a big scare about this tritium. Um, now, this is looking like quite an early dial because it's, it's metal in the middle. It's not plastic. So we might have a tritium tube in here. Um, so we take all that out, we can now just lift off the, this, and we have, I can see it, there you go, and in, in here, th th this, although this looks like metal, this silver bit, it is actually plastic, and can you see in here, there is a glass tube, that is a tritium tube, okay, there, and that would have glowed a sort of uh, pale greeny colour, like the alien sort. Of, like, if you imagine what, if you imagine what an alien egg would glow like, you know, when they glow green and that on the films. That's kind of what a tritium tube glowed like, um, and it glowed. And this, this, I don't know if you can see. It's not like in a seven four six or a seven zero six. It's actually not totally um, not totally opaque you can, can you see my finger through it there this bit is here that bit's painted painted white but the rest of it you can see through look if I look down on the back look you can see the numbers because what they've done is put the numbers on and then I think they've I think they've varnished it with a matte varnish on the back because the numbers, are, again, are on the back. They're not on this side, the numbers. They're on this side, so you can't rub them off on the front. This is where people making reproduction things print the numbers on the front and you can rub them off with your thumbnail. So that's why they're no good. Um, but there's your tritium tube, and of course, it's not glowing at all um, because the half-life of tritium is so short, they are now basically completely inert if you had a very 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 sensitive geiger counter or something um you might get a little bit of a click off it but i'm not worried about it at all i'm still here i've handled lots of trim phones over the years um i don't know anybody who has got radioactive poisoning off a trim phone i think you would have to be very unlucky um, for that to happen but that is a tritium tube we'll put the little clip back on here um, also on a trim phone uh, for those who don't know the finger wheel is slightly slightly coloured on, on a trim phone I don't know if you can see but it's got a kind of slightly pinky purple tint to it it's which is unusual that's how you tell it's a trim phone one other than that i believe they're exactly the same as the ones on 746s um but they do have this tint and it's tinted the same as this as well so we put that back on there like that there's a little peg there that you have to engage on and then put it in the middle like that so we can get this back in um, right, I'm just I'm just looking uh, looking through the uh, comments again as I'm doing this. Um, Dominic says I'd like to find a paint which is sensitive enough to change on its own with daylight through the translucent dial. Yeah, that'd be quite good. Um, Um, Valakuric says tritium's half-life is 64 hours, if you're wondering. So not long at all. So what? 
48, so yeah, about what, 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 64 hours, three days, just over three days, something like that. Um, so its half life is 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 about three days, so it doesn't so it doesn't last long at all. So that's why they're not why they don't work now. It would uh, it would seem. Um, um, good info there. I like that. Tritium's life, half life is 64 hours, if you're wondering. Yeah, I was wondering, actually, so well done for finding that one out. Uh, RT says the old wind up clocks had it on the dials as well, as did a lot of watches. Yeah, that that was radioactive as well, wasn't it? Um, that luminous paint, that, that was radioactive, what watches used to have on the dials. Because now that was. Um, a bit dangerous because isn't there a story about the girls that used to paint the dials used to lick their paintbrush dip it in this luminous paint that was radioactive and paint a dial and lick the paintbrush again that had then got a bit of paint on it of course dip it in the paint again and and, and all their teeth fell out because they got radiation poisoning or something is there, is there a story about that um uh, Dominic says, I've heard a story where a dump of recall dials had a cumulative activity from thousands of dials was high enough for the local council to be charged for processing a radioactive hazard. Yeah, but you, if you had thousands of dials, yeah, but why would you dump dials that were still working, that, was, that were still active? <laughs> could do with some of those. Um... Um, um, Chris says he's got an Australian phone it was stamped wrong it said 1968 801 phone on the base it was an 802 phone uh, the GPO 312 he says rang very faint before he adjusted the bells um, yeah so you adjusted the bells now and it works brilliant because of course the bells have got the hole in the bells um, that screws them down is slightly off center so if you turn the bell round, turn the gong round you can make it closer to or further away from the clapper so you can adjust how hard the clapper hits it so sounds like you've sussed it Chris well done um, um, no, it's, it's really quite harmless on its own um, the same for thorium coatings on old camera lenses um, yeah I forgot about that one um, uh, yeah, the rough green paint. Yeah, that's that's the stuff that I think the girls had problems because they were licking it every day. You see, they, they sort of ingested some of this paint. Um, um, no, it says the older radium coatings are nasty. The half life is around a thousand years or so. That's it. They were radium dials. That they're, they're, they're the ones that, that where the girls' teeth fell out. I remember I remember it now I remember it being gradient yeah I, 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 I remember the story um, yes you are quite right it was uh, it was indeed radium we're not going to come in under the hour are we who cares uh, <laughs> um, uh, don't it says the most recent commercial post 50s radioactive isotopes are usually in the region of 10 years for the half-life Right. A lot of people know a lot about radioactivity on here. I'm quite impressed. Um, going back to trim phones, um, like this one, um, the, the there have been various things tried to make the dials glow again. I have heard about people trying to put LEDs in behind the dial. You take the tritium tube out, and then you've obviously got a space where the tube was. And I have heard of people putting in um, basically a bent piece of plastic rod and an LED at the end and it acts like a light tunnel and it makes the whole bent piece of rod it's the same shape as the tube would have been glow and you put an LED at the end I've also heard of people put in um, a string of LEDs round where the uh, where the tube would have originally been the problem is powering the LEDs. Now you should in theory be able to do it because when a phone is on hook 
there is still some power in the line because that's how modern phones work with batteries, little batteries in them that charge up and that. Um, so there is still power in the line, but the, the difficulty is when it changes, because when it rings, you've got that AC ring on top of the DC that is in the line, and also the DC in the line becomes more when, it, when, it, when a call is coming in. So you've got to do some clever circuitry to um, get the right voltage and that for your LEDs um, all the time but if anybody can work that out it, it needs somebody who's more into electronics than I am to work it out to be quite honest um, but yeah you could put LEDs in but if anybody can come up with a little circuit to run LEDs in a trim phone um, I'm sure a lot of people will be very interested in that because we quite like the dials to glow. America used to have a thing called, I think it was called a princess phone. Maybe somebody in America will tell me if it was, was it a princess? And that did used to light up and it lit up with a bulb, I believe. I believe they actually used a bulb. They used an incandescent bulb um, to light it up. Um, so there are ways of doing it but if anybody knows how you can put um leds into a trim phone how you can power the leds from the line rather than having to have a battery in there that you have to change every now and again of course a simple way would be to put a little battery inside the phone somewhere um that just powers the leds um because it will probably power them for quite some considerable time um, um because you're just powering leds so it will probably work for quite a while, um, just powering one LED perhaps, or two LEDs. Um, so that would almost certainly work, and there would be room on top of the terminals to just, if find it was nicely insulated from everything else, you know, put it in a bit of heat shrink tubing or something, you could drop like a little AAA battery on there or something. Um, no problem. Um, so yeah, that might be a way of doing it. Um, so yeah, that's that's worth a thought. That when I get bored one day, I might try this. Um, so yeah, there you have it. So that about wraps it up for this week. I think we've about covered it. Um, uh, Christopher 2000 says you could wire LED bulbs wired after the switch hook, so when the phone rings doesn't blow up the LED after the switch hook so when a phone rings doesn't it blow up the LED just wondering when when would they be on then Chris when are we talking about having done which way we're we talking about having done wired are we talking about having done wired when it's off hook so it's lit up when it's off hook is that that what we're talking about? That would be sensible, wouldn't it? Because when when you pick the thing up, when you want to use it, that's when you want it lit up. When you've picked the thing up, you then you then want to be able to see what you're dialing, don't you? But originally they were lit all the time, of course, because it was just the tritium glowing. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting thought. I'm going to have to look into this. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to give this a bit more thought and a bit more head scratching. I think. Then, I, and uh, and we'll, we'll come up with something. We'll 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 make an we'll make a trim phone glow again. Let's make it a group project to f find a way of making a trim phone glow again. Um, because I'd quite like to see one. I've never seen one glow. Um, when when these things were working in the 70s and that, um, we never had one. We had an ordinary foam, so I've never seen one that actually glows, um, despite the fact I've got quite a few of them. Uh, Chris says, yeah, to glow when it's off hook. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm going to I'm gonna have to have a think about this. Leave it with me, and we will find a way of making these trim phones glow again. We'll, we'll find a way of doing it. Right, it's almost time for me to go again. Just uh, just time to remind you, if you want to get in touch with us, um, feel free to do so. 
after the show uh, go to Andy's Shed at callpress.net andyshed.callpress.net that's the website you'll find lots of back episodes and things on there you will also find the contact us form on there as well um, thanks to everybody who has contacted me through that um, and sent stuff to me and things and that over the uh, over the last few weeks um, as I said earlier those cases, those phone cases, we are going to be uh, restoring those in uh, in a few weeks' time. I'm just uh, looking at how to do the red one because it's got a big melted patch on the side where something hot has got against it. And it's melted the side out of this case. We're going to try and restore it, see if we can do it. Um, it, should be, uh, it should be very good. Um, uh, Dominic says thanks for another interesting discussion yes thank you Dominic thanks for taking part thanks Arthur thanks Christopher thanks uh, thanks to everybody who's been there in the chat today um, Arthur says have a great week folks yeah yeah hopefully we will indeed um, we'll be back next week um, at the slightly earlier time of 6pm I believe next week so don't get caught out by it. Uh, we're going to be here a little bit earlier, mainly so Christopher 2000 doesn't have to stay up quite so late or quite so early because uh, because he's in Australia and it's like stupid o'clock in the morning there. Um, but but uh, the, the actual real reason for it is, um, well, I'm normally sort of sat around here about 6 o'clock and I think, why do we start this at 6.30 when I'm here at 6 o'clock? So, so we're going to start at 6 o'clock next week. If you've got anything that you want to see in future episodes, please let me know. Either leave a comment or get on andyshed.callpress.net and, uh, and send me a message. If there's anything telephone related or not, it might be about 3D printing, it might be about something else, totally random. Um, get in touch with us and we'll see about covering it in future episodes. We would normally be finishing a series of Andy Shed Live around about now, but because we've had the lockdown and things, and because I'm kind of stuck here with nowhere to go, we're just going to carry on. So we might get on, we might go to episode 30 something in this series. Um, so uh, Chris says, yes, it's 4.44 a.m. in Australia right now, he says. So it's almost time to get up, Chris. <laughs> um, so thanks again to everybody for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you've enjoyed the look inside the trim phone. We will make one glow again. It's going to be my quest now but until next week have a fantastic week out there remember if you've not done so already please subscribe to the channel we've got 800 and something subscribers now we need to get to a thousand and youtube will start giving us a bit of money for the sh for the shows then so hopefully we'll be able to do a bit more so if you're not subscribed already please hit that subscribe button also if you're not tried watching us on a library yet have a little look at it, lbry.tv, and uh, search for Andy Shed on there. You will find us on there. Not every episode is on there, but we are working on getting every episode up on there um, as soon as we possibly can. So for me, for now, have a fantastic week out there. Um, um, Dominic says he sent me another message right Dominic I will go and uh, have a look for that in uh, just a moment's time but for me for now to everybody thanks for being there thanks for watching thanks for taking part in the chat and we will see you slightly earlier six o'clock but the same place next week for another Andy Shed Live thanks very much see you soon <laughs>